Welcome everybody to another YouTube exclusive Voice of Nick episode. We're gonna be playing episode two of Sam and Max now. We're starting on this one. Let's get it going. We are jumping right in it. Jeopardy packs droging and butterscotch. We're on our way. Who was it? The Girl Scouts lawyers again? <laughs> that was the commissioner. You'll never guess which unduly famous TV personality made the most wanted criminals list this week. Phyllis Diller? Gavin McCloud? <gasps> Wake Martindale? Close. Myra Stump, the darling hawk of daytime talk. Myra? As in America's mom? The woman who told Tom Hanks to get a haircut? Surely you jest. She's holding her audience hostage and giving them valuable gifts against their collective will. I don't normally endorse the use of the word dastardly, but this is clearly dastardly, I think. We've got to drive over to the station right away, or at our earliest convenience. <laughs> Great, I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. Um, I think they might have changed the voice actor for Max in between episodes. He doesn't sound exactly the same. Hubert doesn't look so hot, Max. He doesn't look any worse than he did two months ago. Hello? Jerk! <laughs> Hello? Jerk! Remember our motorcycle trip through the Midwest? Just you, me, and the authorities from seven states. But those were quieter times. I'm pretty Remember positive. Our trip to the moon, Max? Like cottage cheese through a strainer, Sam. You continue to baffle me, little pal. Hello, is this the president? It is? Really? Well, thanks. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Sam, it's me. Open the window. I'm trapped in the ledge again. Sam, come on. I have to pee. And the PTA is here. And they're carrying signs. I found a way to solve all three of my problems at once. But I'm going to be needing bail. <laughs> Hi, Sam. This is your therapist calling. I have to cancel our appointment because I'm giving up the practice to go into publishing. Speaking of which, thanks for all your great material. <laughs> Sam, it's me. The drawers are just painted on to make the desk seem useful. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing useful in here. How ironic. One of these days, we're going to finish that game. I'm still working on getting the rest of the darts from the police impound. Makes me sad. I like the old voice actor for Mac. Mr. Spatula is looking good today. Isn't he plastic? Where's the rest of the news collection, Max? It's a surprise. These donuts must be three months old. Don't throw that out! I'm saving it for a science experiment. You bet, little buddy. My toes are all a Twitter that we've gotten another case so close on the heels of the last one. Don't say a Twitter, Sam. Well, well, Myra Stump holding her audience hostage. You watch that particular bit of daytime fluff occasionally, don't you, Max? Whenever our TV's out of hock. 
For some reason, I can't get enough of her sharp-toothed maternal ranting. Why do you suppose Myra's got her audience captive? Who knows? Last month, Charles Groton put his hand on her desk, and she hit it with a ruler. She's very strict. Why do you suppose Myra's got her uh, audience captive? Who knows? She's strict. You're a lovable but essentially useless lump of fur and icky stuffing materials, Max. On the contrary, I can be a vital source of alternative insight into the problems that plague you. Well, <laughs> there's that. Let's get going. You lead and I'll follow haphazardly, shall I? I bought that VCR at the supermarket. So you know it's a good one. Still smells like asparagus, though. It's funny, because all of the lines that he previously had said some of those he's re-recording as the new guy like that one we he said you know it's a good one in the last one but it was a different delivery welcome back america to day three and a half of my most special episode ever you don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour plus everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy creamer we don't need non-dairy creamer we need sleep oh i see you were all thrilled when I gave you cars, then all expense paid vacations, and then home entertainment centers, but now, after I worked so hard and sacrificed so much, you'd rather sleep. It's all about you, isn't it? I guess nothing I ever do is good enough for you. Maybe. Maybe we'll start using non-dairy creamer someday. That's more like it. You see? There's lots more fun to come, so stick around, America, and sit up straight. Nobody trusts a slouch up. Good old TV. It's the only way I still feel well adjusted. Welcome back, America, to day three. Okay, we're gonna skip that. I want to see what's on that mug. Two thousand two was a great year for calendars. I'm glad we stocked up. We've been going through them at a rate of about one a year since then. What do you mean? The reception's perfect right now. <laughs> A very disturbed individual sits here. 20 years worth of electric bills take up a surprising amount of space. Ah, yes, I remember that case. Particularly gruesome. When I got this thing, I thought it would be useful. Where else would we keep the pieces of paper that we're never going to look at again? Anybody home? Guess not. Oh, I like the rack guy. We I hope he comes Jesse back. James's hand appraised one of these days. I bet it's especially valuable because it's autographed. <laughs> oh, what's that? That's Brady Culture's hair. Oh, Brady Culture's hair. It makes for an unwieldy but oh so enchanting memento of our first case in a long while. He howled like a sick wallaby when I shaved it off him. Good times. <laughs> I guess this is where all of our uh, proof of case completions are gonna go. Let's get going. You lead and I'll follow haphazardly, shall I? We'll see if we can learn to love this new Max. Maybe by the end of the game, I assume that we're gonna be sticking with him for the rest of it. Maybe by the end we'll prefer him to the old one. I want to go to Sybil's, but the alien love triangle, is this her, what is it, tabloid rag? <laughs> I love it. Tampering with the mail is a federal offense, punishable by fine and imprisonment. As we found out after the incident with the garden hose. Ah, memories. There we go. Nice cactus. Saguaro? Vinyl. Hey, if you dip that in ink, you could do 30 tattoos at once. If I could scare up 30 customers at once, I'd still be in the tattoo business. I want to read those uh, pieces of paper. I love that the tattoo thing, or the rather the cactus things are alien heads. Can I play with that? No, it drives people crazy. Who? Me. 
Sam, Max, how nice to see you. I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? Yes, by which I mean, huh? It's my new career. I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it called? The Alien Love Triangle Times. <laughs> so you're a publisher now? What happened to psychotherapy? I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and the sensual, and for telling people too much about both. Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe Vatican spokesperson. <laughs> Are you doing any psychotherapy on the side? Only on space aliens. I guess that narrows your clientele quite a bit. No, not really. <laughs> How about a quick analysis, for old times sake? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Three and a half. You're harboring feelings of guilt over previous feelings of remorse. That's so true. <laughs> I wonder what happens if we do a different one. How about one. another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. One. You're selectively audio averse. I don't like the sound of that. Ah ha ha. How about another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Two. You have boundless apirophobia. What's that? The usual. How about another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Three. Sounds like inverse paranoia to me. What don't you mean by that? <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought so. What was it you said about a photo? My new tabloid, the Alien Love Triangle Times, needs a cover photo of an extraterrestrial biological entity, or alien as the unwashed masses calls them, caught getting cozy with some of the locals. Sybil, I'd like the record to show that although I support you as a friend, your latest project makes my skin decidedly crawly. <laughs> Me too, and I like it. There's nothing like good, hard-nosed journalism. You said it. It's time to find out the real answers to the real questions. Like what did those poor cattle do to deserve that? No. What do aliens do for romance? Do they love? How do they get their otherworldly thrills? By playing slots in Kino? That'd explain why they're always seen in Nevada. <laughs> Have you learned anything interesting since you started this, uh, magazine? I learned why Elvis had such an otherworldly voice. Elvis was not an alien. Sure he was. He just wore makeup to cover his emerald green skin. Frankly, Sybil, this project is disturbing, as well as distressingly intimate. Like seeing Stephen King getting a hot butter massage. Oh, you saw last week's issue. <laughs> is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Dr. Phil. Well, that goes without saying. Hmm. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. Good answer. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. This appears to be some sort of reproductive device. It's a mimeograph. I use it to print my tabloid. She's got a story here about two hygienists from Walla Walla and an amorphous Saturnian slime mold. Is that the one where they walk into a bar at the <laughs> beginning? Laundromat. But you're close. That was good. Is this the kind with aloe in the sheets for extra softness? Chloroform, actually. <laughs> Some of my therapy patients used to get a little rowdy. Nothing in there, huh? Nothing useful in here. It's getting late. Hey, Sam. If it's always getting later and later, then how come it's early sometimes? That's one of the great mysteries, little buddy. Alright, so now we go back to Bosco, probably. Bosco might have some stuff. Um. Hey, you're fogging my glasses. Quit it. Alien stuff. He's a conspiracy guy. 
All right, so we don't really have a lead on what to do, but got to check in with the with the usuals, you know? All right, so let's go, uh-oh, this way. Looks like it's this a place gentles? used to be Lefty's tool rental shop. Oh, tool rental. Good old Lefty. I'll miss him. You couldn't stand Lefty. You once poked him in the eye with a number three socket spanner. Exactly. Good times. <laughs> Spin the bottle championship. Spin the bottle championship is coming up. I like when they do the sudden death round with the Molotov cocktail. <laughs> Feel like taking in some pro wrestling? I think I've seen that one. We should go to Switzerland sometime, Max. Nah, they always jip you on the cheese. It's like half air. Eh. Wow, they got a lot more, uh, a lot more posters now. Hey, it's the Indie Angst Film Festival. What do they do? Show that second movie over and over again? <laughs> DRG DLR. I don't know what that would be. Oh. DRG DLR, that's pretty funny. I thought that was Sam and Max's license plate. There it says RLW822. I don't know what that one is. Oh man, this game's got a joke for everything. Oh look, the Alien Love Triangle Times. Alien Love Triangle Times. Looks like they're sold out. Good for them. Has been Brady culture behind bars. He finally found a way to become famous. The police blotter. It looks like candy, but I'm pretty sure it's fish tank gravel again. I've had worse. <laughs> I want to go into Stinky's Diner. Takes me back to my childhood. What ho, Samuel, Maximilian? What the? You're probably wondering how I know your names. Not really. Psst, it's me, Bosco. What's with the slanted soup strainer, Bosco? Bosco? I know not that moniker. <laughs> I am Lord Reginald Rumplebottom, Earl of Dukedom the Third. Sam, what language is he speaking? I'm not sure, Max. But I think it might be English. <gasps> we want to buy something. Mm, yes, mm, uh, quite so, quite so. What have you got? Well, there is still one kind of shaving cream the blooming skin bodies haven't got yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love shaving. That's funny. I've never seen you shave. I didn't mean myself. <laughs> and I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? It's the latest in Bosco tech innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. We don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. <laughs> Why don't you just explain it to us? Well, it alters the frequency of your voice molecules. Very useful, very useful. Hmm, maybe that'll make us sound like an alien? We'd like that voice modulator. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Let's see here. Uh, 30 shillings would be about 1 million American dollars. <laughs> A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. <laughs> Worth every shilling, trust me, trust me. We'll take your last can of shaving cream, old chap. Splendid. Spiffing. Tickety-boo. Just bring it to the counter. Do you have any complimentary fresh garlic? No. Do you have any fine leather jackets? No. Do you have any gumballs the size of your head? No. <laughs> that note sound effect is pretty good. Do you have any... Plus two plate armor of limitless squeezability? No. Do you have any Pez dispensers with the head of infamous Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa? 
No. Do you have any ketchup? No. Uh, oh wait. Got you. Uh, Blast. Drat. Dash it all. Do you have any complimentary? Nothing for us right now. Indeed. Hands in the air, Bosco. You're coming with us. Good heavens! What is the meaning of this? We're taking you in for masquerading as a man of class and distinction. What the devil? Surely you jest. Yes, surely we do. On the bright side, now you can add the police to your long list of paranoia-induced nightmare subjects. <laughs> Pishaw, piffle, pishwash! Thanks, Bosco. Pip pip, honey nut cherryo. All right, good stuff. We got the shaving cream here. We got a couple of things to do. Oh, we got multiple shelves of shaving cream. Good stuff. Well, we started a new episode, ladies and gents, and for some reason, Bosco is now an English gentleman. We'll see what's going on in the second episode of Sam and Max on the next one. Thank you guys for watching the show. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed on this YouTube channel so you can see these episodes come out every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, four times a week. Now, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys, for watching. Bye-bye.